All right, so um, my apologies on that one. I wasn't able to monitor your time anymore. Anyway, so I guess you guys are ready here. Yeah, 14, 14 participants. So how many are we on part two? I think we're 15. 15. 15. 15, right? So there's still one student who's not here. Anyway, so we'll wait one more minute for him. Perfect. So, yeah. Right, so I guess he's not going to join us anymore. Anyway, if ever that he or she is going to uh, join us, then he'll just catch up to us. All right, so we have this algebra of functions, which is super simple. That is already maybe discussed with your algebra. So we have this function, f plus g, or function plus another function is uh, multiplied to your x. So your x here is the f of x, and then your another x here is your g of x. So it's like using the foil method or like distributing this x to this f and then this x to this another function. All right, so that's how we get uh, this formula, f of x plus g of x, all right? So we cannot see this one is gunction. But anyway, this one is another function. So this is function number one, and then this is function number two. Okay, so let's just say that this one is function one, function two. So that's how you add them using this formula. Okay, and then we have another uh, algebra function here in it's representing the difference or uh, minus. We have f minus d, so similar with this uh, first uh, format, this different operator. So f of x minus g of x, right? And we also have this point multiplication. So it's like same method, while method. So f times x times g of x, right? And then we have this division. So we have this f of x divided by g of x, where g of x should not be equal to zero. Why? Because again, if you're going to solve that one on the calculator, you'll get a math error. Okay, so your g of x should be uh, less than negative 1 or greater than positive 1. Okay, so it could be equal to negative 1 and above or uh, or less than or 1 or equal to 1 and above. All right, anyway, as long as it's not uh, 0. All right, so did you guys get this one so far? Algebra of functions. Yes, sir. Get the money. Yes, sir. All right. So let's have some super basic examples. We have here the function one, wherein it has a formula of 2x. And then another function, wherein we can say this one is g of x, but in here it's just using the f of 2x. All right. So f of 1, f of 2. Function 1, function 2. Wherein this function 2 is equal to uh, x squared. So if you're going to use the uh, addition, uh, algebra. So f of 1 plus f of 2 times x. So if we're going to answer this one one by one. So f of 1 f of 1 times x plus f of 2 times x. Wherein f of 1 x is 2x plus uh, f of 2x is x squared. x squared. Okay. So that's it. That is already your answer since we cannot simplify this one anymore. Alright. So this is the answer for letter A. Did you guys get this one? Yes, sir. 
All right. Let's now answer letter B. So we have multiplication. So same concept. Just different operators. So f of 1 times f of 2. Okay. There you go. So instead of plus, we'll use multiplication. 2x times x squared. So in here, we can still simplify this one. Wherein you will get 2x cubed. Correct? Hello, guys. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Keep fighting. Okay, we're almost done. I mean, not yet, but we're almost done with our meeting for today. Okay. So I guess we're not really be able to finish this one since we're still at half slides. Anyway, so let's now move on to the app. Ah, so no more example. So this is your seat break number three. So yeah, super easy. What I have to do is uh, get this function and then this function and then apply it to this algebra. Okay, algebra function. And then this function, this function, and then to this algebra. Okay, and then simplify it to uh, its simplest form. All right? So we have that one for one, two, three. And then we have this one for number four, wherein it has four different uh, functions or al al algebra functions. Okay, so we have this function number one and then function number two. Okay, and then put it here and then simplify it to its simplest form. Right, so again, you guys can answer this one in Microsoft Word or you can do this one handwritten. Then again, if you're going to do this one handwritten, please write legibly. Right, so are we clear so far? Yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so recall your, uh, your algebra. Okay, so this is where you will apply uh, you know, your long solutions in algebra. All right. So we have here graph of a function. So we have this function and then its graph, okay? So this function, 2x plus one is forming this graph. And then those blue labels are just an indicator where uh, this one is uh, three, this one is five. And as you can see, this one is our codomain or range. Wherein, actually this one is your y. f of x is equal to your y. So that is why I put here y is equal to f of x okay and then like uh, uh, what will be the a line that will form if we have a value of let's say uh, negative one positive one for your x so as against right here if we have negative four our uh, y here is negative seven wherein we have negative four for your x axis we have negative three we have negative five we have negative two we have negative three we have negative one we have uh, oops, negative one is negative one, negative one. So this one is incorrect. So correction, negative one, negative one, all right? And if we have one, we have three. If we have two, we have five. And then if we have three, we have seven. So as you can see, this one is a valid function or uh, a legitimate function since if you're going to apply the vertical test, uh, you won't be able to uh, hit one more coordinate. All right. So, did you guys get this point so far? Yes, sir. Okay. So, again, this fx is your y. So, this is your x axis, y axis. And then it's form uh, curvature. So this one is actually not curved, but this one is diagonal. Anyway, so yeah, simple as that. And then here's your secret number four. So all to do is uh, do the same like this one. So you can do this one in Microsoft Word, okay, or you can do this one handwritten. Okay, if you're not familiar in using the graph uh, in Microsoft Word, all right? All right, so next one here is one-to-one -one function. So this one is super easy. So a function from x to y is said to be one to one if for each y is an element of y, there is at most one x 
is an element of x with f of x is equal to y. So as you can see, we should only have one x and then one y. So as you can see, this one is a one-to-one -one function. So uh, this domain has one directed edge, one directed edge, one directed edge, one directed edge. So this one is a one-to-one -one function. Okay. So what's important here, uh, all of your domains must have a partner uh, for you to be able to see that it's a one-to-one -one function and then all of them should only have one partner. So nevertheless, for the uh, the codomain or range, so it doesn't matter if there's one that doesn't have uh, a partner. So there can, uh, there can be unused elements in the codomain. So that's okay. This one is still a one-to-one -one function. So what we're worried about is the domain. And as you can see right here, this one is not a one-to-one -one function anymore since uh, we have two y, yeah, we have two x now for your one y, okay? And in here, in one-to-one -one function, so one x only followed by one y, okay? Where in, in here, we have two x followed by one y. So that is why this one is not a one-to-one -one function. This one is a valid function, but not a one-to-one -one function. All right. Did you guys get this one so far? Sure. You guys sure? So feel free to ask me anytime if there is a part that you guys didn't understand, right? And yeah, that's it for one-to-one -one function. Super simple, super basic. So once you're done with that, so you may now start answering seat break number five, right? So tell which function is a one-to-one -one function and which is not, all right? So we also have unto function, wherein if f is a function from x to y and range of f is y, f is said to be unto y. Or if every element in the codomain is an image of some pre-image, then that one is also unto function. So as you can see right here, we have this domain and then this codomain, and then all of them as a partner. If that's the case, that one is an onto function, okay? If there is at least one on the codomain that doesn't have a partner like this one, this one is not an onto function anymore. Well, this one is a valid function, but not a valid onto function, right? Because we have uh, three and four that doesn't have a partner, right? So did you guys get this one? Yes, sir. Okay, sure. How about the others? All right. So yes, I guess. Sir, good school. Parang parang inaantok ka parin, Mister Agustin, ha? Ang oras niya yung dosser. Anyway, so of course, once you're done with this, ah. Uh, uh, topic, of course, we're going to have a super. break. Okay, so this one is super easy again. So which of the following functions are unto, one-to-one, -one, both, or neither, right? So we also have bijections, wherein consider a function that is both one-to-one -one and unto at the same time. So the from the word by, so it must be one-to-one -one and then unto. So both of those functions must be uh, met for us to be able to say that, ah, all right, that one is a bijection, okay? So since right here, this is an example of uh, one to one and then uh, unto. So checking this one by uh, unto function is super simple. All of them must have a partner, okay? X and then your Y. And if it's one to one, all of your uh, domains and then range must have only one partner. If that's the case, then that one is one to one. And then as you can see, this one is one to one and unto then this one is a bijection. All right, understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, 
let's now move on to the next one. So we have here identity function. So it is a function uh, such that the image and the pre-image are always equal. So if we have uh, this kind of, uh, say, happenings or coincidence, if your uh, x is always equal with your y, then this one is identity function. Or this function is equal with this function, and this one is identity function. All right? So as simple as that. So no matter what is the value of your x, you still have the same uh, value okay, from your pre-image to your image. Okay, we also have here the inverse function wherein uh, your x will become y, your y will become x. So a bijection whose function is from y to x, okay? So that is why it's called inverse because supposedly this one is from x to y, but in inverse, it's the opposite. It's now from y to x, okay? So we have this example, f of a is equal to b. And if you're going to do the inverse of this one, your inverse function uh, will be, will, be uh, will interchange, okay? So here now is your function, which is your b, and then it is now equal to your a. So basically your image or pre-image become your image, and then your image become your pre-image, vice versa. Okay, to go back to its original uh, function. So we have uh, those two property. So we have this one f and then uh, multiplied to uh, inverse function of x is equal to x. Or you can have this simple uh, formula. So inverse function of f is equal to x. So mostly this is the one that you're going to use since one is uh, much more uh, lesser or in fact. Uh, I'll join this one, which is quite longer. So yeah, that's it for the inverse function. So again, your x become your y, your y become your x. So let's have an example. Find the inverse of the function. So anyone who wants to volunteer to answer this example. So your f raised to negative 1 is equal to One. All right, so I guess no one likes to volunteer. So I'm guessing that your brains are super exhausted now, you know, due to overload of knowledge due to overload of topics, maybe. Not really knowledge, maybe. Yeah, information or knowledge. But due to exhaustion, uh, exhaustion then you won't be able to call this one, uh, absorb, okay, the information that we are now discussing right now. Anyway, uh, just do a lot of self-study, okay? So we're discussing all of them one by one in the past phase since we are lit. Very limited when it comes to time. Okay, so my apologies on that one. Anyway, so the answer for this one here is again when it's the inverse of function, your x will become your y, your y will become your x. So the inverse of this one is a1, a1, c2, and then b. Alright, so as simple as that. So Mr. Tanikala actually answered this one so he sent a direct message to me so which is the same with this one ah no okay so your 3b is uh incorrect so this one should be b3 right okay so uh, i really appreciate your uh response guys so that's uh call this one that only means that you guys are really listening to my discussion and that only means that you guys are really interested with this subject. Right? Anyway, so let's move on to the example number two. So we have this function f of x is equal to 2 times x. Okay. So uh, using this formula, we have actually three steps or four steps that needs to be done. Okay. So your f of x will be replaced by y. Okay. Since initially this one is really y like what I mentioned on the graph, 
okay, f of x is equal to y. Where is it now? Here. And then this uh, original format will be interchanged. Okay. So your x will become your y, your y will become your x. Okay. So as you can try, uh, as you can see right here. And then the one that we are uh, looking for is the value of your y. So solve for y and simplify. So in here, just transpose this two over here, and then you will get y is equal to x divided by two. And then going back to the uh, original formula, so y is the inverse function of x, which is now equal to x divided by two. Okay, so this is now your answer. All right, so this is the inverse function of this uh, original function. Okay, so from two times x became, yeah, 2 times x became x divided by 2. And then you can check this one, of course, wherein you will come up with the original uh, formula. So this f or inverse function of x is equal to x divided by 2, which is now this one. And then this uh, x is your, uh, where is this y? Uh, 2. Ah, uh, yeah, 2. And then this is uh, came from your final result, which is x divided by 2. And then if ever you're going to simplify this one, okay, you will have equal to x. So as you can see, this is the inverse function, and then this one goes back to this uh, x. All right. Anyway, so this is just a way of checking whether your answer is really correct or not. But if you're sure that you have done uh, those uh, steps, then 99% that your answer will be correct. All right, so let's have another example here. So find the inverse function of f of x is equal to 2 raised to x. So in here, we actually have two solutions. So for solution A, we have used the log. And then for solution B, we have used the log. So we have this uh, original okay, formula, y is equal to f of x is equal to 2x, or just y is equal to uh, to raise to x. Then, of course, the second step is interchange those two. So your y will become x, your x will become y. And then from there, you can now use the log okay, to bring down this y here. So log of 2, so this is your base, and then log of 2 of x is equal to the exponent, which is your y. And then from there, we now have the value of y, log of 2 of x. All right, so we have another solution which is uh, just the same, okay, but just a different uh, way of doing it. So, in here, we're going to use ln. So, y is equal to 2 raised to x, and then interchange those two. So, x became y, y became x, and then just multiply both sides by ln. And then, uh, in applying ln, so you can actually bring down the exponent here. So, supposedly, we have one here, one times ln of x, but since it's only one and it's multiplication, so you can just remove that one. Okay, nothing will change. And then in here we have an exponent of y, so just bring down this y on the other side. So y times ln of two. And from there, we can now simplify this one. So uh divide uh, yeah, divide both sides by ln of two, then you will get this kind of expression. So y is equal to ln of x divided by ln of two. Okay, so if you're going to uh like, say, like for example, it has a, a value for your uh, x, and then this y has a value for x, you will have, or you will get the same uh, answer. Okay, so just two different solutions, but the same answer. Okay, so we have this y, this one is correct, this one is also correct. All right, so were you guys able to follow so far? Yes, sir. All right. So maybe I'm assuming that maybe uh, we're able to follow, but maybe most of you uh, we're not, since uh, we're not really yeah we're not really using log and then ln in our equation. So if you're not familiar with log and then ln, so feel free to you uh yeah research this one on YouTube on how to bring down a certain exponent using log, and how to bring down a certain exponent using ln. So you can find uh, a two-minute or one-minute video uh, with the use of those uh, 
function, log and mod, right? So we have here more examples. Example number four, we have this, and then this by applying four basic steps, then you will get this Y. So I will leave the analysis part until you guys, since we don't have enough time anymore. And the same with this example. So just apply those four steps, and then you will get this one as your Y, okay, or your inverse function. Anyway, this one is uh, already super easy. So you guys can uh, do this one on your own. All right. So once you're done with those examples, then you may now start in answering secret number seven. Okay, so we have A to I. All right, so find the inverse function of the following. So you can base your uh, answer with our examples or from our examples. All right, so again, you can do this one in Microsoft Word or handwritten. All right, so are we clear so far for the inverse function? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So, tatawa ako. Parang, at the, I'm, at the same time, uh, I feel like, uh, ano pa English na naaawa? I feel, I pity you guys. Yeah. I feel poor for you since uh, you know, in two hours, you have to congest or uh, absorb uh, everything and then do all the seat tricks, like 10 seat tricks, 9 seat tricks, uh, within one week and then considering that this is not your only subject so you have you guys really have a lot of things to do anyway so this is for your own benefit so once uh, you're done with your sufferings and then you were able to finish everything properly then you'll just think yourself in the future okay so you will not become yourself in the future uh if you if you were not able to uh experience this kind of hardship all right, so enough with those uh, live uh, advices. Anyway, we have this inverse function. So can we define the inverse of the following function? So we have this uh, uh, a3, uh, b4, c1, etc., etc. So what is uh, inverse of this function? So we cannot, actually, we cannot uh, uh, do the inverse function this one since uh, your uh range doesn't have a partner or there's one of your domain that doesn't have a partner okay so you can only do the inverse function if it's an unto function okay uh no actually so if it's a bijection so not only unto but it should be a one-to-one -one function uh also so one-to-one -one and then unto function so that's that is the only time that you can uh, do the inverse of this one all right so this one is also uh, not one-to-one, -one, so you can uh, apply the inverse function for this one. Okay. All right. So we have here the compositions of functions. Uh, so you can just uh, disregard this one for now. Basically, we have this f of g of a. Okay. So later on, uh, uh, I will discuss one by one what are the things that you need to consider for you to get the f of g of a. All right, so let's have this example. We have the f of x, your first function, and then your g of x, which is your second function, okay? And then it is asking you the f of g, okay? And then followed by your x. Your x here is always constant, okay? So whatever is the value here will be the place to the value of your g of x. So the very first step, very first step that you need to do here is the g of x, okay? So look under the g of x, and then what is the value of your x? 1. So as you can see right here, just to replace that x by 1. So 3 times 1 plus 2 is equals to 5, which is this one now, okay? And then from there, we have the g of x, which is 5. So just replace the g of x into your f of x. So your x now here is 5. So 2 times 5 is 10, plus 3 is equal to 13, okay, which is now this one. Or you can do this one in a long method, like this one. So we have replaced the uh, x or the f of x by g of x, and then do the math, okay? And then, of course, replace the x by 1. 
then you will get the same answer, which is 30. All right? So the first thing that you need to check is the value of your g of x, and then replace it your g of x. And then once you're done solving your g of x, substitute it to your f of x, and then you will get the result as the same with this one. So great, you guys able to follow this one? Medyo, sir. Medyo. So a little, yes, right? Sir. That's because this diagram is quite confusing. So, well, actually, it's not confusing. It just takes time for you guys to analyze this one. So it might uh, take you two minutes, three minutes to analyze this one. So that is why I told you guys to disregard this one for now, because we won't be able to uh, come up with a solid uh, definition of this one unless we have an example. Okay. So from there, just uh, uh, worry about the value of your uh, g of x and then substitute your g of x here and then you will get this one. Anyway, I will leave this one, the, your part, whatever is your uh, analysis this one as long as you will come up with the result of 13 then you're good to go all right let's have another example so again what is f of g of 2 so this is now the value of your g of x so just substitute this 2 to your g of x so 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2 is 8 so your g of x is 8 so whatever is the value of your g of x just substitute that one to your f of x so 2 times 8 is 16 plus 3 is equal to 19. All right? So it seems like my way of solving this one is faster than explaining this one. Anyway, you can have this kind of solution or my own solution just like what I did uh, manually on my mind. Right? So it's in front, which is equal to 19. So how was it? Were you guys able to follow now at this 50%? Sir, same lang ba yung yan tapos yung kanina? Ah, no, no, no. This one is f of g of 1 before. And this one now is f of g of 2. Okay? Sir, pero pwede gamitin niya mo pa. Yung nasa example dito. Pardon? Pero pwede gamitin niya nasa example dito, sir. Sa example ito? No, that depends on your function that is given to you. And then that also depends on your uh, formula that is given to your first function and then formula of your second function. Okay, so basically the same concept. Okay, or same way of solving things. Just a different uh, expression. All right. Sir, may tanong po ako. Yes. Sir, galing ba yung answer sa g of 2 yung 8? Pumunta ba sa f of 8? f8? Ayan. Or iba po sila? This one? Your g of 2? Yes, sir. Yes, this this g of 2 uh, goes to your uh, f of 8 or f of x. So basically, you need to solve the value of g first before you can solve the value of f. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So do not solve the f first. Solve the value of g first, wherein your x is 2. Okay. So that's how we've got the value of 8. Then once you're done with g of x, then substitute the value of your g to your f of x, which is now this part. So how we've come up with 19. All right. So any other questions so far? All right, none, sir. So, I guess no none. Yes? Is there no question? What? I said no question. Ah, uh, no question. Okay. I heard I have a question. Anyway, so we have this next example. Example number three. So we have this g function 1, 8, 2, 8, 3, c from the coordinates 1, 2, 3, and then a, b, c. And then we have another function, which is a, y, b, x, c, z. And then from y to z is equal to uh, x, y, z. So what is f of g? 
Okay, so actually the answer here is 1y, 2y, and then 3z. Anyway, so let me just show to you guys the step by step on how did we come up with 1y, 2y, and then 3z. There you go. So basically, just plot this one using a graph. So initially, we have 1a. Oops, 1, 2, 3, plus. 1, 2, 3. And then a, b, c. a, b, c. So we have 1a, we have 2a, and then we have 3c. And then on the second function, we have a, y. So x, y, z. We have a, y. We have d, x. And then we have c, z. Right. So from there, we can now conclude that the uh, total functionalities is 1 going to, oops, 1 going to y, and then 2 going to y, and then 3 going to z. So basically, we've just disregarded this uh, middle one. Okay. So 1x, I mean 1y, sorry, and then 2y, and then 3z. So that's how we've come up with those answers. All right. So understood so far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So would you guys like to finish this module now or this next meeting? Sir, baka naman. Next meeting na. Next meeting. Oh, so, sayang, 13 slides na lang. Anyway, so we'll just continue the rest next meeting. Okay. So, goodbye and, uh, oops. Wait, 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 wait. So, answer seat work number eight. Okay. After example number three, 